She's a reluctant test test pilot. Look good. Oh, that means it's ready to go. Here we go. Are you ready? Taylor. I'm an educator at MOCA. This is my cat, Rue, and <laughs> we are so excited to welcome you back to MOCA Create at Home. For people who have not joined us before for MOCA Create at Home, um, about twice a month we come together, we learn about MOCA, the museum, our collections, our mission, what we teach, um, at the museum, and we also make a fun art project together. So Rue and I are really excited to learn and create with you guys today. So let's get started. Today, I wanna talk about a particular person um, who we actually have highlighted in our galleries at MOCA, and her name is Hazel Ying Lee. You can see in this photo that Hazel had a big family. Her parents were immigrants who moved from China to the U.S., and Hazel and her siblings were born in Portland, Oregon. In this photo, Hazel is just 15. Hazel was described as a loud and funny person. Do you think having so many siblings had an impact on her personality? What do you think, Rue? Rue is an only child, so she gets too much attention, you could say. Right? Yeah. When Hazel grew up, she became the first Chinese-American woman to fly for the U.S. military. Hazel was a pilot during World War II, but because she was a woman, she wasn't allowed to fight during battles. Instead, Hazel joined WASP, the Women's Air Force Service Pilots. As a part of this organization, she tested planes to see if they were safe, she trained pilots, and she helped to fly airplanes between the factories where they were built and the military bases where they needed them to fight. Hazel still had a big and silly personality when she was a pilot. She liked to use lipstick to write Taishanese characters on the tails of planes, usually nicknames or jokes about the other pilots. It wasn't all fun though. Just because she wasn't fighting doesn't mean that Hazel didn't have a difficult job. Since Hazel was testing brand new planes, there was a chance that they could not work properly and that Hazel could get injured. Once during World War II, Hazel had to crash land her plane in a field in Kansas. A farmer ran out with a pitchfork, thinking she was Japanese and one of the US's enemies in the war. Hazel was really brave though, and she stood up to him and explained that she was a Chinese American pilot flying for the United States. Hazel passed away in 1944 during a mission for WASP. She was moving a plane to an airbase and the traffic control tower made a mistake causing her and another plane to crash into each other. Hazel, along with other veterans who fought for the US between 1941 and 1946, were awarded a victory medal, which Mocha has on view in our galleries. Hazel has also received the Congressional Gold Medal and the American Campaign Medal. Today, in honor of Hazel, we are going to make and decorate our own paper airplanes. Now, there are only a few materials we're going to need for this project. I'm going to show you one example of a paper airplane, and for that paper airplane, all we need is paper. I'm going to recommend that you use just regular printer paper, um, but if you have something a little bit heavier, like construction paper or even something lighter, you can test those out too. It's just going to change the way that your plane flies, but might be interesting to see what works best. Also, we're going to need some coloring materials. So I have markers, but you can, of course, use colored pencils, crayons. Um, you could even try using paint, whatever you have at home. For some other paper airplanes that you might try out, or maybe um, some types that you know how to make, you might need scissors, or maybe some paper clips to add some weight to the front or back of your plane. Uh, but like I said, for the one I'm going to show you today, we just need paper and our markers. There are tons of different ways to fold a paper airplane. Um, some of the ways you fold a plane can create 
um, an airplane that stays up in the air for a really long time. Maybe it makes a plane that just goes really high. Maybe it makes a plane that can spin or do loop-de-loops. Um, the one that I'm going to show you today is called a bulldog dart. I picked it because I thought it was a fun name. I thought Hazel might like. Um, and it's pretty easy to make. That's one of the reasons that I picked it. But also, it does fly really well. It stays up in the air for a pretty long time, and it goes pretty far. If you know a different type of airplane, you can, of course, choose to make that. Or you can even look up on the internet with the help of an adult and pick an airplane that maybe has some special features or does tricks or goes really high, whatever you're interested in making. All right, so to make our bulldog dart, we are gonna start by folding our paper in half like a hot dog or lengthwise, so just like this. We're gonna open that back up and our next step is going to be folding the top corners into that fold we made, so just like this. So you'll end up with two triangles and a pointy nose at the top. For our next step, we are going to flip our paper over and we're gonna fold the top again. So we're gonna fold this edge down to the fold here, so just like this. Next, we're gonna take this point, which I'm gonna just make a little point here, there we go. Take this point, we're gonna fold it down to meet this place where all of the folds are sort of meeting. We are going to fold our plane in half. This stuff's gonna be on the inside, so just like this. Now you can see where this type of airplane gets its name from. This is the nose of the plane, so it's got a sort of flat nose like a bulldog, so bulldog dart. And our last step is to fold down the wings. So we're gonna just try and make sort of a straight fold here, starting at this corner. So you're gonna fold this part a little bit, just like this. And same thing on the other side. have it it's our completed bulldog dart now that we have our completed paper airplanes whether you did a bulldog dart with me or you did another type of paper airplane that you like or you know how to fold um, we are ready to decorate so I mentioned that we're gonna use just drawing materials I wouldn't recommend trying to glue anything onto your plane um, it might just make it heavier and it could change the way that it flies um, or make it hard for your plane to fly. We're going to just stick with things that aren't going to add any weight. Um, if you test out your plane and then you decide you just want to go crazy with the decorations, you don't care how it flies, you just want to make a beautiful airplane, then of course feel free to add glue on whatever you would like to. Okay, so we're ready to decorate our airplanes. You can think about if there are any symbols you want to add or images you want to draw. I'm going to draw some symbols on mine. Also think about what colors you want to use. Are you going to just choose one or two colors? Are you going to pick a bunch of colors? Whatever you want. And also want to think about what kind of patterns you can add on your plane. So there's a couple of my symbols. I'm going to add, just like Hazel, I'm going to add uh, my nickname. I'm going to put it on both sides. So I'm decorating my plane so that it is symmetrical. And that just means that it is the same on both sides. It matches on both sides. You don't have to do your airplane symmetrical. You can make it asymmetrical, different on both sides, up to you. I'm gonna add a pattern on mine. I'm gonna add some stripes. So I'm sort of sticking to a color theme 
just these three colors. I think it still looks a little bit bland, so I'm gonna decorate the nose. I'm gonna just color it in. So you can also think about patterns, but if you want it to be solid or just plain, See how it looks. I still think it's missing something. It's still a little bit boring up here. So the last thing I'm going to do is add a few more stripes. There we go. I'm very happy with it. I think it looks great. I can't wait to see it fly. If you are gonna practice testing out your airplane inside, just make sure that you aren't throwing it towards anything delicate that might break and also that there aren't any people or animals or pets in the way because you don't want them to get poked in the eye. So Rue is here. There's nothing in the way. We're ready to test. Here we go. Rue, are you ready? <laughs> test the plane for me. Make sure does it look good? Oh. That means it's ready to go. Okay, Rune, here we go. Now that we have made our planes and tested them and we know that they work, there are a lot of fun things you can do with them. Um, we talked about decorating, you can decorate them more, but you can also have competitions with them. You can compete with other friends or family members to see who can make the plane that stays in the air the longest, or flies the farthest, or highest, or maybe does the best spins or loops. Um, and you can even compete against yourself to see if you can make different types of airplanes that do different things. Rue and I cannot wait to see the different types of paper airplanes that you all make. We're very excited to see what styles you chose, if you make a bulldog dart like we did, or if you choose something else. We want to see the colors you use, any patterns or nicknames that you put on your planes. And I'm really interested to know if they went really far, if they went really high, if they did any flips or anything interesting. As always, we would love for you to share what you create with us by tagging um, at Mocha NYC or using the hashtag Mocha Create at Home or even sending us your images directly. Thank you so much for learning and creating with me and Ro, and we'll see you at the beginning of October. Bye bye, baby. Say bye. <laughs>